So what on earth is thought leadership? If you visit some of the world's leading companies like uh, Deloitte or McKinsey or IBM, you'll find they spend a lot of time talking about thought leadership. Uh, in fact, for some of them, it's their main method of marketing. Uh, it's, it's where they invest most of their, their uh, funds. And yet, and yet, um, there are hardly any books on it. There are no academics studying it. I defy you to find it in any corporate strategy or marketing book. It's a mystery. Um, it's particularly a mystery because it's been so effective for so long. Thought leadership is essentially the creation and the communication of ideas for business advantage. The companies that are doing it really right, those that are best practice, are some of the ones I've already mentioned, like IBM and McKinsey. Uh, there are also some charities that have used thought leadership, like Fair Trade. Um, and there are some consumer oriented organisations like Philips, the lighting company, uh, and Unilever. They're getting better and better on it, at it uh, as organisations. Why? Well, for several reasons. Firstly, if you're the, the organisation, or the person actually, an individual, who identifies and shapes an idea, you own it and you become well known for it. Secondly, there is evidence that uh, in the modern uh, digital age, a lot of business buyers in particular look at reports on the web. Um, they're called white papers or research reports. And they're attracted to businesses and individuals who produce reports that interest them. In fact, in America right now, it seems that uh, uh, some of those um, buyers will, 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 will put a company directly onto their purchase list. They'll go straight to them rather than put them through a tender process. And finally, there is uh, the phenomenon of people uh, getting carried away with different ideas and rumours. Uh, I call it being stupid very fast. Uh, so some of the scare stories associated with, for instance, fracking for shale gas or GM food, some, some ideas uh, can get carried away and people get the wrong end of the stick. The problem is with the internet, these rumours spread very, very fast. So there are many companies who are trying to identify what they call evolving societal issues uh, and to put a, a shape around those and to influence the way they develop in order to both stop their business uh, being damaged but also to take commercial advantage. A really, really good example of that is uh, Unilever's um, na a natural beauty campaign associated with their Dove product which has been fabulously successful over a decade. And it really confronted this issue of um, the images of women in the media around the world. And they've done some wonderful things, both on the web uh, and through PR and through um, some very uh, interesting research into what that does, particularly to young women as they develop their self-esteem. So um, thought leadership has many uses um, uh, uh, for businesses. Planning is a very um, boring word, so when you talk about planning thought leadership, I don't, I don't want it to seem boring. Uh, essentially, the way to plan thought leadership is to identify an idea, an idea that's relevant to your organisation uh, and to your customers. Um, and those ideas can be really exciting, and they can actually change society. They're, they're very, very powerful. There are different ways of doing that. Some people do it through research. IBM famously discovered uh, its emphasis on innovation through what they call their C-suite survey. They research the leaders of businesses. Others do it through what, what they call subject matter experts. They have people either inside their organisation or, or around the world who are working independently who are leading world-class experts on the subject. And they work with those to identify these emerging ideas. Others simply track concerns in society, like global warming or environmentalism or, or whatever. Uh, and planning uh, thought leadership involves shaping those ideas, prioritising them and making them relevant to the customers that you're interested in. Communicating it, I deliberately use the word communicating rather than marketing uh, for reasons I can go into and I certainly go into in the book. It's very dangerous to think about marketing thought leadership because people uh, respect thought leadership when, when they feel there's integrity behind the idea. If marketing is too 
obvious or too glitzy, it under, undermines the credibility of the idea. So most of the best practice organisations with thought, in thought leadership talk about dissemination or communication. They have uh, expert communications people like editors. Uh, the current leader of uh, thought leadership within McKinsey is the ex-editor of one of the world's leading business magazines. Uh, and they talk about editorial calendars, um, they talk about different uh, communications media, uh, and an integrated way of getting this very subtle but very powerful message across the world. I personally think that bringing thought leadership to the market is a bit like bringing a brand to a market. They're both very, very delicate things. A brand can be damaged very easily, uh, as can a thought leadership idea, and they need subtlety and power um, and thought in the way they're communicated to a marketplace.